Welcome. This is Information Service Engineering Lecture number 14, ISE Applications Part 2. And this is the very last part of the lecture, in which we are going to talk about exploratory search. And look at this wonderful background that I have selected here. It's a map of the moon. And you will see that the moon will play an important role in the examples we will show you there for exploratory search in this lecture. Okay. Before we dive deeper into exploratory search, we have to make clear first what's the difference between retrieval and exploration. Okay, retrieval. And you see here we have the book related to the moon we are talking about. So let's assume you look for something rather specific that you already know. So you know what you're looking for, like in a library. When you go in a library and you look for a specific book, probably also for a specific edition of a book. So you look for uh, the book From the Earth to the Moon by Jules Verne. So how do you specify your search request? Okay, you need, of course, the author name and you need the title of the book. Often you are using unique identifiers and descriptive metadata also to describe the things you are looking for in your retrieval problem. So this is how you usually operate in a search engine also on the web. But let's stick to our example with the library. Imagine you know exactly what you're looking for. What you're doing in the library is you're going to the library catalog and you're looking for the correct index card of Jules Verne from the Earth to the Moon. On the index card, you might find several additional information. So the correct title is uh, from the Earth to the Moon, direct in 97 hours, 20 minutes and a trip round it. And you see here is a very nice edition from 1873. And you see some signature there on the library card also, which indicates somehow where you might find this book then in the library shelves. So this is quite easy. But now imagine you have read From the Earth to the Moon. Now you are looking for another book which might interest you. So it should be somehow comparable that will be of interest for me because I really liked From the Earth to the Moon. Or imagine you want to find books of the same topic, so other stories related to, you know, a trip to the moon or other classical science fiction stories, so related topics. You also want to know probably how did the author develop over time? So how did the, the topic change? So what was it like when in the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, author wrote about a trip to the moon? Yeah, principally I want to, to answer the question, so what else should I read? And please give me only suggestions that I really might like. So you might up in the end with stuff like you see here, let's say other books from the author, let's say the movie or a movie based on another book of the author or related uh, books like, for example, from author H.G. Wells here, The First Man on the Moon or Explorers on the Moon from a Tintin comic. In the traditional library, if you had exactly this kind of question, libraries enable exploratory search because they are organized in shelves. And in these shelves, usually, you know, the books are ordered topic based. So science fiction books or classical science fiction books, they will be grouped together. So you will simply be able to browse that on the shelf and to find things belonging together that somehow also then might interest you. And if this fails and if you have some questions, of course, you also have an intelligent recommender system, which is the librarian, of course. Yeah, and of course we want to simulate or approximate something like this also on the computer. And this then is called exploratory search. And for this, we are in our current research also developing interfaces for search and exploration. You have already seen the sky high block with the refer plugin. It's a WordPress plugin for exactly this kind of block we have here. And there we have an article on Jules Verne and I click it again so we will now go again to the blog you have here an article about Jules Verne it's not about the trip to the moon it's about around the world in 80 days and we have already learned that we have semantic annotations here on the blog in every text that is here somehow underlined and for that directly information from a knowledge base here from dbpedia is loaded over the web is accessed over the web and displayed here however 
If I click on that item, I initiate another kind of visualization there in this tool. So what do I see here? I see a green block of things which are persons who are somehow related to Jules Verne, who is here in the focus. I see a blue block of places and locations also somehow related to Jules Verne. And I see a purple block of other things which might be related. And I see a yellow block of events. So if I want to explore this here now again, how do I do that? So it's quite simple. So I simply, let's say, go to one thing and hover over it. You see here what I have selected is Sandokan, which is a, um, a book by Emilio Salgari, who is also an author, and he was influenced by Jules Verne, for example. This is what you see exactly here. You can also ask other things. So let's go to Igor Sikorsky. So this is the inventor of uh, the helicopter. So you see here, for example, that of course Igor Sikorsky also was influenced by um, Jules Verne. And you see that this guy was originally Russian of birth and um, he was awarded somehow the Franklin Institute, whatever that is. And you see other things. So he's known for the helicopter or he was he received the National Medal of Science and many more. So that is interesting information that might be of interest for you. And you see also the birth date of that guy. But you see also more. So let's see what else could be interesting. Uh, Christopher Tolkien, you know that guy? He is, of course, um, the son of J.R.R. Tolkien, who also was influenced by Jules Verne. Or we have Jean-Jacques Rousseau, interestingly. He was directly influenced by Jules Verne. However, he also influenced Victor Hugo and he influenced Jean-Paul Sartre. And there is, you know, many interconnections. So this is a tool where you really can explore how are things really related with each other. And of course, these kind of relations, they come from the knowledge base and you simply can explore it. And if you want to then have another entity in the focus, simply click on it, like here on Jean-Jacques Rousseau. And you see here, let's say, um, how Charles Fournier or Charles Fourier is related to Jean-Jacques Rousseau also via two hops. And you can do, of course, the same thing here, for example, if you click on a, on a place. So you see here that Johann Gottlieb Fichte, philosopher, he was born in Saxony and also he was influenced by Jean-Jacques Rousseau, so things like that. So this is an exploratory search interface where you really can explore what's in there in this information system, which is a block on the history of science. Okay, so exploratory search. When is it useful? Especially if you can't directly phrase your search request, if you cannot find exactly what you were looking for, which means you, you are, let's say, in a closed library, which does not have what you are looking for, but you would like to have something similar, which is close by or related to it, to see what's there. Also, if you are not able to exactly phrase your search request, this can be that you need a special kind of vocabulary that you don't know because it's a domain that is not of your interest so far. And then, of course, you would be happy to find something nearby, something you can phrase or if the system helps you to explore what's there nearby. And you do this usually based on two principles. One principle is similarity, which means we try to discover things and documents similar, but not necessarily related to our original search request. And we are looking for things which are related, closely related, but not necessarily similar to our originally search request. So this is what we are doing in exploratory search. How can we implement this based on a knowledge graph? Again, an example, I have shown you exactly the entity from the Earth to the Moon, which is a representation of this work in DBpedia, the knowledge graph that we already know. If you look at exactly that entity, you will see that there are lots of interesting relations available for that. For example, of course, you know, this is a book, so this is quite uh, obvious here. You see the author, Jules Verne. If you go further, then you see other authors who are influenced by that author, like H.G. Wells. You see the publisher, you see the country of the publisher, you see that this was originally written in French. You see the date of publication, the genre, also where it has been published. So this book is from France. And of course, you see some other works which might be based on here exactly that book. 
And this is a film, A Trip to the Moon from Georges Méliès, really nice and one of the very first science fiction movies of all times. I guess it's from 1902, so almost 120 years old. Look at it at YouTube, you will find it. And now the question is, okay, similarity versus relatedness. So let's have a look at something which is really, really similar. So I switch to the next slide and you see, plop, we have another book in the middle. This is another book also by Jules Verne, which as you see here has almost exactly the same properties and property values with only a few exceptions. I go back and forth again. So you see what has changed is here once the publication year. So this book was published in 1864, while From the Earth to the Moon was published in 1865. And of course, another movie there is based on this book. And um, therefore, both books seem to be rather similar. And therefore, this might be a nice recommendation or let's say add-on complementary to your original search. And this would already be a similarity-based search for exactly From the Earth to the Moon. If you're looking for something related and not similar, then of course, try to choose here a trip to the moon. So this is not similar because it's a movie. It's something completely different. It's of a different type, but we have a relationship there and um, you might be interested in it. So this is a related based recommendation. Okay, so there are several strategies how exactly to implement this. So usually what you do is you try to combine in your recommendation strategy or exploration strategy, similarity with relatedness. So what we do here, for example, we are looking for something similar. So for things which are all books, so they have the same RDF type information. And these things should be related directly with our origin of, of query here. So our origin is from the earth to the moon and we have two books, so similar things which are directly related with it. And this is uh, a journey to the center of the earth. So the book that is also really, really similar. And um, we have In Search of the Castaways. So one was the previous work, the other one was the subsequent work. Okay, another query. So we could go one hop further. So for example, again, we are looking for things which are similar to our original thing. So they should also be of book. And now we go one hop further, turning the relatedness. So let's go to the author here, Jules Verne. And then let's look at things that have been somehow or are related to Jules Verne and are of exactly the same type like our original thing. And then we end up with other books of Jules Verne. So not only the two books we have originally found, like from the center, uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth, there are then also like Master of the World, The Mysterious Island or Matthias Sandorf. And we can go one hop further. So let's say we decide to go in direction of author. Then we go one hop further and look for an author who was influenced by Jules Verne. So this is also then an author or writer. So we have here both times similarity applied and then this is two hops. And now again, look for similar things, which means for books of exactly that author. So who are related to that author. And then you find here, for example, The Invisible Man, The Island of Dr. Moreau or The War of the Worlds. You see, exploration of the available search space here will be enabled always in an interplay of similarity and relatedness. And this in the end guides your exploration strategy. You might have already found out that of course, exploration is rather similar to recommendation. However, the goal is a bit diff different. So in exploratory search, this represents activities carried out by the searcher who are either unfamiliar with the domain of their goal. So they need first to learn about the topic in order to understand how to achieve their goal, or they are unsure about the ways how to achieve their goals, either let it be the technology or the process, or they are completely unsure about their goals on the first place. Recommender systems, they have another pragmatics. They seek to predict the preference of a user would give to an item. They are rather similar, but they are not the same. So exploratory search is, is broader. Of course, also exploratory search recommends you something, but it's a process, an ongoing process. This is not only one recommendation. This opens up a complete new direction, a complete new field and guides you through the search space. This is exploratory search. So it's a generalization of a recommender system. Okay, 
The last thing we want to do together is of course, I can show you a small Sparkle query, which already serves for exploration or recommendation. So imagine you want to reach two events from the earth to the moon, but it's currently not available in your library. So what else should you read? So it's a question similar like you had before. The general idea is of course, we retrieve similar books, sharing property and property values with exactly that book. And we can easily do a Sparkle query as for example, on DBpedia or Wikipedia, uh, Wikidata to get then some kind of recommendations. The Sparkle query for DBpedia looks more or less like that. It's a bit more complicated, so you will figure it out simply by clicking here on Sparkle query. But in the end, what we are doing here is we have here one fact, so from the Earth to the Moon and for, for the Earth of the Moon, uh, from the Earth to the Moon, we try to collect all property value pairs, so all triples with property and object. And then we are looking for some other thing, which is a book, which shares exactly the same property and object values. And we are grouping all what we find together here by book. So for each book, then we count how many property object pairs are the same. And this here is counted here. And then it's ordered in descending order, which means um, the book with the most similarities, so the most matches will be first in the list. And this will be then an ordered list. I have it here on the link, but it's more complicated. And it can be that uh, this query is complicated on DBpedia. You might end up in a timeout. Therefore, we have already pre prepared for you here the answer. And by the time I did exactly this kind of query, I received the following results. You see here in the list, lots of other books by Jules Verne. They are first in the list. And then there come interesting other authors like Frank Herbert, Pierre Boulle, Emile Sola, so other French authors, but also other science fiction authors. You see also H.G. Wells, you see Stephen King, Victor Hugo, and so on. Uh, we have picked out a few examples that you see that this really works somehow. So the first thing that exactly this method recommends to you is In Search of the Castaways, which was also one of the books also of Jules Verne that was also recommended in one of our examples here. However, you find also, let's say, some more modern science fiction novel like Dune by Frank Herbert, so exciting novel, so you should have read it. And also a famous classical science fiction novel from Ray Bradbury, Fahrenheit 541. So this should be on your reading list if you liked to read uh, From the Earth to the Moon. However, we know that there is not only DBpedia, you can also try out Wikidata. We have prepared here the same for you for Wikidata. Again, you can here click on it and see then the answer or the result exactly of that query. But we have already prepared something for you that you don't have to wait. Again, this takes 30 to 45 seconds. And also sometimes you will receive a timeout on that. So don't be disappointed if it doesn't work directly if you click on it. However, first recommendation here. So this is a bit more simple because if we do exactly the same query, you definitely run into a timeout. So therefore here we only um, are referring to property object pairs where the object is a URI, but this only has information on the side. First thing that is recommended here is Planet of the Apes. Interesting, isn't it? Here by Pierre Boulle. Or another thing which is recommended are Alexandre Dumas, the, the Three Musketeers. Of course, this is really similar to what uh, Jules Verne wrote in the sense of its adventure. Uh, it's an adventure. And of course, it's also fun and nice to read. Or also um, here you have in this recommendation and exploration list, a psychological thriller by Georges Simenon, The Cat. Yeah, so play around with it. The world is there, it lies below your feet. And of course, you can explore it. So keep on exploring. Do this with the available knowledge bases. We have now come to an end of this lecture and we covered a broad range of subjects. We started in the beginning with the question how to get information from the web. And we saw, of course, information, knowledge and data are completely different things. And of course, what we want to do, we want to make sense of the stuff we see on the web. And of course, machines should be able to process it, to understand it. So the first chapter in the lecture, we did natural language processing to understand text. So what is the traditional way to do that? Then we went further on to symbolic knowledge representation, which were knowledge graphs. How can I represent knowledge 
in terms based on a logic, on a formal logic with a formal knowledge representation. We did ontologies, we did semantic web technology and all the stuff. And then we went on further to machine learning, which is sub-symbolic representation of knowledge. So we saw how things can be learned. All of these three things were topics of AI that we had in this lecture referred to as information service engineering. And then in the end, we were connecting everything together. We connected machine learning to NLP by doing word embeddings. We connected knowledge graphs to machine learning by doing knowledge graph embeddings. And we did all three together to do some data science stuff that we have seen here in the previous lectures in some notebooks that we tried out. We did data analysis. We did um, semantic search. We did exploratory search. And this, of course, is a huge field that is open for research and is, of course, currently also our research in, in our research group. If you are a student at KIT here in my course, be aware that this course will be continued in the winter semester and we will be offering also um, a project course where you can in small groups then work on one of our research problems for the term of the semester and will be coached by one of our PhD students or one of our postdocs. And of course, this is also fun and you can apply exactly these things you have learned here. So. I hope you have enjoyed the course. I had lots of fun. It took me many, many weeks to do all these recordings. So I hope many people will see this on YouTube. And if you like the course, please be friend with us on Twitter. So we have a Twitter account, not only me, also the team Fitz ISE has a Twitter account. Follow us there and be informed about our research. That's it. Thank you very much and bye-bye.